Well, on today's show, World of Color returns to California Adventure. John Favreau reveals details for the live-action Star Wars series, and a location has been cons- uh, confirmed for the upcoming space-themed restaurant at Epcot, and so much more, all in today's Disney Parks Podcast. Welcome to the Disney Parks Podcast with your hosts, Tony Castlenova from DisneyByTheNumbers.com and Park Hopper John from WDWParkHoppers.com. Keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the podcast at all times. And get ready for the Disney Parks Podcast. We know that coming to Walt Disney World can be very overwhelming with all the fast passes, the dining reservations, even getting from attraction to attraction can be extremely overwhelming. But we've got a friend that can help you make your next trip to Walt Disney World even more magical. It's Ramon and Theme Park Concierges. You can visit themeparkconcierges.com or call them at 407-257-9973. Ramon and his amazing team of VIP concierges will take care of you from the moment you arrive at the park until the moment you go back to your resort. They can take care of you for a four-hour time slot or a full day. It all depends on what you need. They can take care of your dining reservations, your fast passes, and even make sure that you find even more magic hidden in the Disney parks. Well, contact our friends, themeparkconcierges.com, or call 407-257-9973 and tell them your friends over at the Disney Parks Podcast sent you. And now, Disney Parks Podcast News. Okay, so let's talk about now the world of color. The wonderful Wonderful world world of of colors. Uh, it's returning to California Venture on June 22. Uh, back in April, as part of the Pixar Fest began, uh, and the Paint the Night took over uh, the Paint the Night took over the parade route right. in Disney's California Venture. Paradise Bay went dark, and the World of Color went on hiatus. I also think they were doing some upgrades during that too, yeah. from what I read. Yeah, from what I heard. Uh, meanwhile, construction has continued on Pixar Pier. So rumors were strong that the popular nighttime spectacular will be returning in time for the opening of Pixar Pier. But today, park hours for June 22nd were released and the return of World of Color. Yay! So while uh, hours beyond June 22nd have not been released, for that day, the Paint the Night will be performed at 8.50 p.m. and the World of Color will be at 10.15 p.m. So there you go. Nice. Yeah, I, that would be... Yeah, I don't. That would be sad if you didn't, went all the way out there and you didn't get World of Color. <laughs> yeah, well, World of Color or Paint the Night, one of the two. I guess I prefer both. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. would. Yeah, I would too. Yeah. So we've been hearing rumblings for a while about John Favreau doing a live action Star Wars series, and according to the Nerdist, executive producer and writer John Favreau, who brought us uh, little things like uh, the Jungle Book, Rudy. Iron Man. He did Rudy, too? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. He's even in it. Uh, recently, d- he was Rudy's Favre's roommate. in Rudy? Yeah. I'll be darned. Uh, recently, re- uh, Favre recently revealed details about his live-action, untitled Star Wars television show uh, at the premiere of Solo, a Star Wars story. Let me pause for just a second. Initial reviews for the movie Solo have mm-hmm. actually been really positive. Oh, well, there you go. Let's hope that doesn't suck. Uh, Favreau told Nerdist that the series will pick up seven years after the Battle of Endor, which happened at the end of which movie, Tony? Return of the Jedi. Very good. Uh, And it'll also take place uh, after Return of the Jedi, (laughs) but before? The Last Jedi. Close. One before it. Don't say Rogue One. But Force. Force Awakens. There you go. Uh, the series will introduce all new characters, some of which will be portrayed using motion capture CGI. Good uh, yeah. Favreau is familiar with the motion, cap- motion capture uh, CGI as a director. He used it during the Jungle Book. It was previously announced that this series would be streamed on Disney's upcoming streaming, streaming service. So that's another little teaser 
right uh, for that. Now it's live action. I've also heard rumors that there's going to be a Star Wars animated series of some sort. Ooh. That's just a rumor from what I hear. Hmm. Okay. Uh, okay, buddy. Oh, you're what done. Are you, what are you reading the internet about? No, what yeah, you, I'm doing stuff. Are you looking at girly photos? Yeah, put up uh, lower thirds. Okay, cool. All right, last week we had a interesting trivia question, and you had a 50-50 shot at winning this. Yep, <laughs> I couldn't even fake guess. Yeah, and the question was, which slipper uh, did Cindy drop on her way at, uh, out of the ball? Left, no right, right, no left. Ah, crud. And the correct answer was left. The left one. Apparently, she was in her right mind. <laughs> there, you there you go. Uh, and the winner is Kim. And Kim, it's in the mail, as we'd like to say right Sweet. here. Sweet. Yeah. Did I ever tell you the story? We went to a D23 uh, event about Fantasyland. And uh, it was uh, maybe a couple hundred people. And they had it after the park closed, after the Magic Kingdom closed, and they had it uh, in Mickey's Phil of Magic. That's where they presented. Right. So as the Imagineer was up there telling us about uh, the new fantasy land. There's actually a stage up there? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, he kept saying Cindy. You know, Cindy this and Cindy that. I'm like, who is Cindy? Who the hell is Cindy? And then finally, at the end, he said, you know, said, well, the Cindy. Wait a minute. What are we like on a first name basis now with a princess? We, <laughs> we've shortened Cinderella down to Cindy. Come on, I thought that was very weird. That's almost as bad. So when I first got into the Disney community, it's really kind of, it's really kind of quelled a bit. Mm -hmm. But everybody was using all the acronyms, you know, because yeah. you didn't go to Magic Kingdom, you went to MK, right? You went to DAK, right? Or DAC, or you know, you went to DHS. Right. Or you went to Epcot, <laughs> you know, because right. they couldn't come up with a big thing. Epcot yeah. was just easier to say. That drove me crazy. Yeah, well, as cast members, you would be with Epcot as EP. EP? Yeah, that's what we would write, EP. Yeah. All right. Should have been like EC, like Epcot Center. Yeah, no my kidding. Opinion. EC, Epcot Center. There you yeah. go. All right, what's yeah. the next trivia thing? Okay, so the next trivia question for this week is this. In Sleeping Beauty... What is the name of Maleficent's pet raven? Michael Eisner. Fire-breathing dragon. <laughs> <laughs> I heard they had a little problem with that this weekend. Yeah, we'll I think talk we're about, talk about that. that in a minute. Yeah. yeah, and that was one of the reasons I, I was thinking, you know, let's have some, fun, some kind of Maleficent yeah. question. So yeah. that's the question. In Sleeping Beauty, what is Maleficent's pet raven's name? If you think you know the answer, send that to Disney Parks Podcast at the gmail.com. Sweetness. Hey, uh, if you love what we do here and you'd like to help support the show, to keep the show running, keep it live, uh, I think our, our uh, payment's coming up for our hosting, and that ain't cheap, kids. Oh, so. Boy. Uh, patreon.com slash Disney Parks Podcast is how you can help support the show. Uh, you get exclusive ad free shows, you get uh, exclusive content just for you guys, as well as access to our private Facebook fan group page. And uh, we hang out there every Monday at 7 p.m. and do a show just for you guys. Plus, there's a bunch of other uh, cool offers and things we do just for our Patreons. Uh, if you'd like to be hip and cool like all these really cool hip people, you go to patreon.com slash Disney Parks Podcast, and you could be awesome like James, Krista, Grant, Ernie, David, Sam, Jennifer, Ross, Ron, Jeremy, Willie, Michael, Mike, Cassandra, Katie, Eva, and other Katie. Thank you guys so much for being our patrons, and we can't wait to see you at uh, patreon.com slash Disney Parks Podcast. All right. And let's open this up so you can see it. This is what <laughs> happened this weekend. Fire. Fire. So uh, our friend here, the dragon, uh, caught fire this weekend. Kind of went up in a ball of flays. Uh, this happened at the Magic Kingdom uh, right in front of the Hall of Presidents on May 11th. Uh, my feeling is he ain't coming back because he is way too expensive to repair. His head is gone. It's been melted. Yeah. Uh, now, the Disneyland Paris has got a 
duplicate of this little fire breathing creature, and uh, theirs has stopped the fire breathing for right now. Yeah. Until do- Disney does a, a complete investigation as to why Sir Dragon Sir Burns a lot. Sir Burns a lot. <laughs> Caught fire. I, I think he voted for Hillary, and he caught wind that Trump was actually in the Hall of Presidents, and he just had just lit yeah. on fire. That's my opinion. Right. I could do this too. We got a little video I can play for you, y'all. I'm not. I'm not trying to start a political rant, so please yeah. don't. Right. But I just, I just want to say yeah. a little so, joke. So this is the video of said dragon <laughs> catching fire. I'm on fire. Oh, somebody put me out. Jeez Louise, I'm on fire. I got a headache. I got a headache. Oh, it burns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, God. God. I feel so bad yeah. for those people. Yeah, this goes on for about two minutes. The good. <laughs> oh, uh, the good part is no cast members or guests were hurt uh, during this incident. So. Yes. That could have been so bad. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that could have been so bad. Yeah. I I I want to go now and see what the pavement looks like because yeah. there was a lot of plastic yeah. dripping onto the pavement. And I'm sure that was not easy to scrape off. And the scary thing is watching this video is like people were really still close up to it. Yes. I'm like, guys, rather than people backing up, they tanks. got they went from what I heard was people rather than backing up and getting away from it, were going closer to get pictures Idiots. and videos. Idiots. I'm like, you know, if there's a propane tank, which there is, yeah, and it goes kablooey, <laughs> <laughs> you gone. <laughs> you're gonna get some dragon shrapnel. <laughs> yes, you're gonna take some dragon home with you. You know, there's somebody who's like, wow, look at that, kids. That fire looks so real. Yeah. Disney does everything so good here. Right. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's crazy. Hey, uh, we've been talking about this space themed restaurant coming to Epcot. For oh, yeah. a while now, and the location has been confirmed. Nice. Uh, there's been a lot of speculation that the building would become the new space themed restaurant at Epcot, but Disney has confirmed that the restaurant restaurant is going to be built in a newly developed area that's located between Mission Space and Test Track attractions in Future now, World. I pulled up Google Maps. We did this last week too. Yeah. To look at that space, and it's a small little sliver. That's what she said. I'm like, that seems like a weird place between the two. Yeah. Unless they have like a walkway and then it sits behind the two of them. Yeah. You know, that's, I'm hoping what they're thinking. I don't know. I thought the Wonders of Life Pavilion would have been the place to put it, right? Yeah, I don't know what they're doing with that over there because they're putting a new roof on it. Right. And they're building the roller coaster right next to it. Is that going to be the gift shop? It's going to be a know. big gift shop. Yeah, maybe. Uh, when it opens, the themed restaurant will invite guests to venture into space for a, quote, dining experience in the stars. Right. Uh, Tony's favorite, the Patina Restaurant Group, who operates several other restaurants in the Walt Disney World Resort, including Tutto Italia via Napoli mm-hmm. at Epcot and Morimoto Asia. I didn't know Patina did Morimoto Asia. They operate it, but Marimoto has okay. the final say in what happens in that building. Yes, and our personal favorite, Maria and Enzo's Restaurante yeah. oh, at yeah. Disney Springs, will operate the new dining location. So, could be 50-50, kids. Right, right. It, uh, man. Don't screw this up, Patina. Please group. don't. Yeah, because I have a lot of high expectations for what this is going to look and feel like. You know, you know, I think they should serve things like uh, tang. Tang. You know, tang. You know, freeze dried ice, ice astronaut cream. Astronaut ice cream. Yeah, astronaut ice cream. You, you know. know, meals ready to eat. Yeah, it should you be know. a fun space package. You yeah. squeeze the water into yeah. you squeeze them. <laughs> the squirt yogurt. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just say don't screw it up because I, I there's a lot of fun things I think they could do in that space. Get it? Space. Yeah, See what one of the there? chat room people said the prices will be out of this world. Oh, yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Yep. Hey, uh, so this was interesting, too. New permits have been uh, filed that link to the River Country Redevelopment. Sweet. So this week, Disney moved closer to beginning the construction on the site that was formerly the Disney River Country Water Park. 
Mm. On May 7th, 2018, a permit was filed with the South Florida. It always starts with the South Florida Water Management District. That's right. Swift Mud's got to get their <laughs> cut first. It's gotta, where's the retention pond going, sir? That's right. It's all about saving the water in this uh, place. This is to use the land in the Magic Kingdom area for temporary storage and landfill, dubbed as the Stolport Stockpile. Uh, the project name refers to a plot of land just outside the Magic Kingdom entry gates where Disney has recently used for construction staging. Yeah. Uh, when Walt Disney World uh, was first conceived, the Walt Disney himself had a small airstrip constructed for use uh, by his private plane, known as a stall port, which is for short takeoff and landing. Hmm. The strip still exists to the east of World Drive leading into the Magic Kingdom. It has not been used for air traffic in many years, but often served as the home to construction trailers and materials uh, for large projects in the Magic Kingdom, since there's really no place to put them there. Right. This new permit uh, seeks to utilize approximately 30 acres for it, what it's describing as the temporary stockpiling of fill. And there'll be a lot of filling going on. Going to have to be, yes. Yeah. A lot of holes to fill. Uh, permanent applications link the stall port stockpile to what is called Project 89. I love the way they named their projects. <laughs> Project 89 was previously identified as the development of the former River Country water park site. So they went back and renamed it the same thing. Very nice. interesting. Nice. Back in 2010, Disney embarked on several projects in the vicinity of River Country and Disney Fort Wilderness which would have led up to the construction of the new Disney Vacation Club property. Those plans were seemingly abandoned and leaked to the Internet in 2014. Permits filed earlier this year suggested that Disney planned some construction activity on the site, either the revival of the DVC project or something entirely different. If they build another DVC <laughs> store, for the love of God, I mean... Do you not know how to build anything else but TBC resorts? Okay, guys. I, as a back. member, I'm glad. Yeah, yeah. But I don't want it to devalue my property. Okay, guys. Here's what we're going to do. You ready? A no. DVC property. No. <laughs> uh, and I drove by Coronado Springs yesterday. Oh, yeah. Did not recognize it. That I know. building is like... Huge. Like, thank you, Mr. President. It's yeah. huge. It's huge. It's I'm huge. telling you, it's huge. It's going to be huge. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. I'm going to put a lot of wall around it. It's going to be yeah. great. It's going to be great. Well, you know, it's anyway. Uh, so, uh, Wine Bar George. Mm-hmm. Uh, I Your had, buddy. I had brunch with a, a guy who knows George. <laughs> we were talking right. about the restaurant or the, the venue yesterday. He says, man, that place has been so bad. Really? Just all the hang ups and stuff. We didn't get too deep into it. He didn't, you know, it wasn't necessarily yeah. a story to tell. Sure. But Wine Bar George, the walls are down. Disney Springs. Construction walls. That Construction is. walls is what I meant. <laughs> uh, and the full menu for the basket at Wine Bar George, which is their quick surface picnics, are coming soon to Disney Springs. Uh, we've already talked about Wine Bar George joining the lineup at Disney Springs dining locations. And with it comes a fresh new menu. Now, set to open this summer not spring, mm -hmm. uh, it'll be offering quick service uh, entity that will be called uh, The Basket. Uh, they've already got big signage up for this, so you can't miss it. Really? Basket, yeah. Basket's offering an, an offering similar to if you were to pack uh, a very fancy picnic for you and your guests, which includes things like sandwiches, cheeses, olives, hummus, excuse me, hummus, and even a carafe and a gorino glass for wine. Nice. nice. Uh, now, here's the menu for the basket at Wine Bar George. Now, this is the first time we've seen actual menu prices. Right. Okay, so sit back and relax, kids. This is going to get crazy. The basket, picnic basket for two, $80. Wow. Olives and hummus, cheese, charcuterie box, two chocolate chip cookies, a baguette, and a carafe of wine, which includes uh, Garino glasses and a carafe. Nice. 80 bucks. It's a, it seems a little seems steep. A little, a little high. For cookie? 
A chocolate chip cookie? Exactly. And hummus? Now, if the olives and cheese and hummus and the charcuterie are as fine quality as mm. we're thinking, might be a little worth it. Right. Uh, if you've got four people, they've got you covered for $110 uh, with the same thing. Olives, hummus, choice of two cheese and charcuterie boxes. Right. Uh, a choice of one sandwich, four chocolate chip cookies, a baguette, uh, and a carafe of wine, including the Gorino glasses and the carafe. Wow. So the sandwiches, uh, you've got a goat cheese, fig, arugula, and facele. Facele? Facel? Facil? I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, 14 bucks. Yeah. Uh, speck, prosciutto, brie, olives, salad, a baguette for 14 A ham, gruyere, and ciabatta. That's 14 uh, Under their bites and boxes, you've got olives and hummus. That's 11 bucks. Uh, crispy mac and cheese bites. That's eleven bucks. Uh, Calabrese brie, honey, and crackers for thirteen. Uh, Soprasada cheddar, fig, and crackers. That's thirteen. Chorizo manchango, which is one of my favorite cheeses. Mm-hmm. Almonds and crackers for thirteen bucks. You can get a chocolate chip cookie for four dollars. Nice. And you can get rosé all day for four dollars. I love that name. Uh, the wines that will be on tap at the basket. This is just the basket. Okay. Uh, a Draga. Uh, w- different prices, different pricing. I'm yeah. not going to go crazy. They'll have a Draga. Uh, we can post them. Yeah. Uh, VZ, uh, McRoasty, uh, Bonnie Dune, uh, Clues to Gilroy. Uh, that's cool. Uh, Sabine, Argyle, and Halter Ranch. And then they're going to have beers from Orlando Brewing, uh, Czech Republic from Pilsner, uh, Cigar City, uh, Hefeweizen, New Belgium, Sweet Water, Crooked Can, not Crooked Dan, it's Crooked Can, High Stepper, which is one of my favorites, Founders Breakfast Out, which is a glorious beer, by the way. Have you ever had Breakfast Out? No. It's like breakfast in a can. It's Ooh, like nice. bacon and maple, and it's really good. Uh, and then you get that lovely Bud Light crap. Uh, Bud Light, sorry. Uh, Keel and Curly, which is out of our old Plant City. Uh, Keel and Curly Strawberry Cider, which is okay. Right. And uh, you get Froze all day, 12 bucks. Uh, teas, coffees, espresso, cappuccino, cold brew coffee, soft drinks, water, and juice boxes will also be available. So quite an assortment of things from the basket. And if the pricing here is any indication, that's their quick service. Yeah. So I think Wine Bar George is not going to be for the faint of heart. Oh, no. Oh, no. So, yeah. Yeah, I have a feeling it's going to be... I'm sure he's going to have caviar in there, too. Yeah, he's probably going to have some stuff in there that yeah. we're not going to be able to afford. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. All right, so you ready for some headline news, T? Yeah. I forgot it. Oh. Hey, you didn't press the button. I didn't get the bip 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 stuff. So... All right, uh, talking about things that were silenced this weekend, Mickey no longer speaks in the Magic Kingdom. That's truly tragic. Yeah. So now when you go to meet Mickey, you'll get all the old hand gestures. Yeah. Uh, with silent Mickey. Yeah. He's going back to Steamboat Willie days. <laughs> yeah. I saw a video of a guy that visits the parks and does the voices to the characters. Oh, really? And he did Stitch. He met Stitch. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the middle of meeting Stitch, he flipped and started doing Mickey. Mm. And for the Stitch to convey that he was doing Mickey Mouse, he started doing like the Mickey. Yeah. He started doing the Mickey moves. I was like, ah, 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 ah. You're doing Mickey moves in a Stitch outfit. Yeah. So you could tell. Yeah. You know. So it was pretty cool. That's yeah. that's sad. That's so sad. Yeah, now we is. have to bring our own voices in. I know. So yeah. anyhow, I like talking Mickey. I really enjoyed it. It was fun. I, it's. I put Mickey on the uh, spot when he said, uh, "Oh, where are you going next, pal?" And I said, "Well, I'm going to go have a couple of drinks." Okay, have a good time. <laughs> it was like a delay. The guy's like, "What do I? What? what there you go. There. <laughs> okay, have fun. <laughs> yeah." Drink uh, responsibly. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Uh, hey, there's... Uh, <laughs> Don't pull on my, my loving Eiser. <laughs> there's now these new sliding puzzle iPhone cases at the DTEC stores. <laughs> Have you seen these? No. So it's the old, you know, yeah. the sliding... You... 
Is there nothing to do on the phone? You now have to flip it over and use the back of the phone to it. You know what I've heard, though? There's an app for that. Yeah, probably. Buy an app. Yeah. Sliding puzzle app. Yeah. I I don't know. It's the craziest thing. Uh, The Walt Disney... Now, listen. The salons, I think, have got to be a cash cow for them. Oh, yeah. They got to be able to print the money in those places. Yeah. But they're taking it up a level. I know what this is. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So the Walt Disney salons are now introducing... Character couture packages. Yeah. You know what this really is? You can get the full-on makeup and full-on hair and the dress wear. And I don't I didn't see any prices. I'm sure those dresses are in the three to five hundred dollar range. Maybe even more. Okay. So everybody listening, come gather around. Uncle John oh has boy. some things. Do you know what this really is? No. This is and I'm not knocking them, I'm not making fun of them. Because at some level, I am one, not, mm-hmm. not necessarily wanting to be in a dress. But this is for all of those people who are pissed because their kids can do bippity boppity boutique and, and they, they can't. Yeah. So Disney's like, wait, you mean you, you would pay right. to get dressed up like your favorite Disney like Snow White, princess Cinderella, or Sleeping prince Beauty, or character? Tiana. With the hair and, and pay the price for that as an adult? Yeah. An adult one? You yeah. would do that? And we, as yes. Disney fans, said, hells yes, we made it rain. Yeah. yeah. And Disney's like, okay. Uh, so yeah, that's what this is. This is Bippity Boppity Boutique for adults. Yeah. And you know what? I'm okay with that. Why not? It's your money. So does that mean that you think maybe, uh, once again, they leave the other uh, gender out, the males? Do you think... You can wear a dress if you want to. Uh, <laughs> they'll have, uh, you know, maybe you can uh, get suited up like your your favorite uh, you know, Marvel character or Star Wars character Ooh. or pirate or uh, Buzz Lightyear or whatever. Yeah. Are they going to have something for the guys? I doubt it. Again? I no. doubt it. No. We went into the Disney style a couple days ago. Have you been there yet? No. At Disney Springs? No. Very. It's everything. Sided. No, it's not. Oh, really? It's not. Mm-mm. No. Wow. It's really. Actually, it's really, really cool. They have a. Uh, they have uh, one wall that is a great picture of the castle mm. that goes from day to nighttime. Oh, nice. In like 10 nice. seconds. It's really cool. Uh, but they have male and female clothing. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it's t shirts. It's all character t shirts. Yeah. Really, really kitschy t shirts. Okay. You should definitely check in that place. They've got a lot of really cool stuff. All right. Good. All right. About time. Uh, unfortunately, if you are coming to the Disney World, Toy Story Mania will be closed from June 11th to June 18th so that they can finally flip the entrance. Flipping it. Uh, to the Toy Story uh, side. So. Now, they're saying the 18th, and Toy Story Land doesn't open to the 30th. So are they going to have some way for people to get in there from the 18th to the 30th? That'll be interesting. Um, They really didn't say. Uh, You know, Fox has been, uh, Disney's been trying to buy Fox. Uh, James Murdoch will not be joining Disney as part of the Fox deal. Shocking. So he's out. Shocking. Yeah. If that happens. I'm sure he'll have enough money for retirement. What do you think about that? Comcast put a bid in. It's all cash. Yeah. What do you think about that? They're trying to just raise up the price so that Disney has to pay more for it. (laughs) Screw you guys. They don't really want it. They just want to raise up the price. Sure they do. They don't want Skynet? No. No. They're not Sky News? They may want Sky Sky News, but... uh, Sky (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) They may want Sky News, but they're really just trying to... John Carter, you must come with me if you want to leave. (laughs) They're really just trying to drive up the price, uh, so it makes it more difficult. Ah, Disney will pay it. Disney's got it. But here's the interesting thing: we just uh, made a billion dollars with freaking Marvel's yeah. Avengers. Yeah, but if they pay everybody that was in that movie, it's probably only a one percent net. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt that. Uh, yeah, I heard some of them did it for scale, um, just to be in it. Um, yeah, they probably got rights on the back end. Probably. Because they know it would do well. Uh, what was the second? Oh, um, there was a lot of news about uh, Last Man Standing coming back now to Fox. Right. I'm saying to myself, well, if Disney buys Fox, it's just going to be right back where it started. Yeah. <laughs> and then Bob will just cancel it again because of Tim's, you know. They're not buying the news. network, are they? They're not buying Fox network, are they? I don't know. Fox Television, aren't they? 
I don't know. Yeah, they're getting well, the Simpsons. I mean, I mean, they did so well with the, the Roseanne subterfuge. Mm-hmm. I mean, why not? Yeah, I don't it know. It was their highest rated show. Yes. I mean, politics aside, it literally was their highest rated comedy. Yeah. yeah. Jeez, idiots. I don't know. Okay, let the alcohol be free in the Magic Kingdom. There are now three more restaurants serving alcohol. So, so much for the band on having no alcohol in the Magic Kingdom. You can't walk around with it still. You can't walk around with it, but you can consume plenty of it now. Uh, the Plaza, Crystal Palace, and Diamond Horseshoe all got permitted to sell alcohol. Wow. So, there you go. That does break my heart. Uh you were down at Disney Springs this weekend, right? Were you down by the mm-hmm. World of No? No, because you didn't hear me lose my mind. You didn't see my head burst into flames like yeah. the, the like the dragon? the dragon. Maybe that was the dragon. Yeah. <laughs> had I seen that, had yeah. I known that, I would have lost my mind. Yeah. So uh Stitch is gone from the World of Disney store. Poof. No. <laughs> so where did he go? Could I he buy went him? Bye bye. Can yeah. I buy him? <laughs> Can I mount them on the top of my <laughs> car and drive around town? <laughs> Spraying motor oil on it again. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know if he's coming back, if they temporarily removed him, you know, to do some more construction or, you know. They've had many different things there. Sure. Stitch was just the last iteration. Sure. Yeah, I totally get that. You know, uh-huh. there was Mickey there for a while. Did he spit water too? No. Nothing spit except for Stitch. Everybody liked the water. Yeah. Except me. I didn't like it. Yeah. Uh, construction is also underway uh, at the Planet Hollywood for their quick service. It's over by the gift shop area. Mm. You'll probably see the construction wall by Wolfgang Puck. Construction wall, construction wall. Yeah. <laughs> it's, the, it's the land of construction wall. <laughs> it's construction alley. It's construction yeah. wall alley. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they're going to get their uh, quick service right soon. Nice. So I, I would have thought... Why build another place? Just serve it out of, like, Stargazers. You know, have, like, a window. Uh, Stargazer Lounge mm-hmm. is cut off from virtually everybody. Because so I went there the other day, mm-hmm. and everything that they served was prepackaged and stored wow. there. Wow. Uh, and you could tell, mm. you know. So I don't think there's really good access point for them, mm. you know. Well, it should have. When they were building the place, well, they, they probably should have thought about that. Yeah, but, you know, this is just a bar. Yeah. If it, you know, look, it got it, it's really simple. Just don't serve food. Yeah, right. You know, right. you're surrounded by food places. Just say, hey, if you want food, there's 29 places, literally 10 steps away. Right. So um, yeah, I wanted to show you this. Uh, our field reporter Vince uh, was in the Magic Kingdom on Sunday and sent me this. Uh, apparently, Disney was giving out flowers. To uh, all the moms that were coming in the park. Wow, that lasted, what, five minutes? Well, from the amount that they had, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was quick. <laughs> I'm sure that did not last very long. Um, so, But it was nice. I think it was a nice uh, gesture uh, to give out some flowers. Right? Sure. Yeah. Uh, and then my final announcement is June on this podcast will be Toy Story Month. We are going to beat the Jesus out of Toy Story. Yay. <laughs> I'll bring up t- plenty of merchandise we can chit-chat about and where I got my special Toy Story ears. Who you uh, haven't planned on chit-chatting about this with? <laughs> you. Uh, oh, <laughs> I got plenty of Toy Story shirts I can wear. Yeah. So we're going to have some Toy Story fun. All right. We're going to bring it on. <laughs> it's going to be great. It I is. don't. I don't dislike Toy Story. <laughs> I just don't live and breathe it. <laughs> just don't like talking about it. <laughs> Not for an entire month, but we'll make it work. It'll be fun. That's really only three weeks. It'll be fun. I'll have alcohol. It'll be fun. <laughs> All right. So we want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen uh, and to watch. We do a live show every Monday night at eight p.m. Uh, Facebook.com slash Disney Parks Podcast. You can join in the chat room like our friends here. And uh, maybe it'll be a night like tonight. We're going to do a, a live uh, Q&A after the show show. After the show show show. Show show. And yeah. uh, we're going to have some fun with that. Try to do some call-in stuff as well. We'll get to some of the questions in the chat room after this. But uh, we want to make sure you come live. 
Monday nights, Eastern Time, Facebook.com slash Disney Parks Podcast. You can also find us at Twitter at Disney Podcaster. But make sure you come to DisneyParksPodcast.com. You can check out all of our, our articles. You can check out our show archives, links to amazing sponsors. And that's really how you can find Tony's site, my site, our books, and everything that we have there available for you. Uh, outside of that, buddy, is there anything else you want to add? Yes. Uh, Robin reminded me of this. Uh, don't forget to go to DisneyByTheNumbers.com. We have a Pixar hat for sale this month. Uh, 20 bucks, one size fits most. Uh, nice little Pixar hat that you can wear uh, with your Toy Story Land shirt if you got one uh, around the uh, Toy Story Land. Pixar in the front and a ball in the back, right? Yep. yep. So don't forget to do that over at DisneyByTheNumbers.com. All right. With that, my friends, we will see, see you in, in the, the parks. parks. The Disney Parks Podcast is not affiliated with the Walt Disney Company. All Disney Parks, attractions, lands, shows, event names, etc. are registered trademarks of the Walt Disney Company. Like a boat out of the blue Fate steps in and sees you through